Today we're going to learn about polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. Normally, when a cell is getting ready to divide, it will make a copy of all of its DNA. This is the process of DNA replication. However, in biotechnology, we can artificially make copies of DNA through polymerase chain reaction. So PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, is a technique used to make many copies of a small section of DNA. This process of making copies is called amplification. This was first developed in 1983, and we can generate millions of copies of a particular section from a very small amount of DNA. So we've talked about crime scene solving before, and technicians can gather evidence from uh, as few as seven to 10 cells to be able to make copies of DNA to do DNA fingerprinting. Dr. Carrie Mullis uh, developed the PCR method and actually won a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1993. So here are the key ingredients of PCR. We need a DNA template to be amplified or copied. This is the uh, DNA that you're going to gather from a patient or from a crime scene. Um, or something that you're going to, a sample that is known or unknown. Uh, you will need primers, which are short pieces of DNA, and they're single-stranded, and they're designed to match and bind to each end of the target sequence. So you need two primers. You'll have a forward primer, so you can identify where the beginning of that target sequence is, and the reverse primer, uh, locates where the end of that target sequence is. So you're not copying the entire molecule of DNA uh, from the samples that you have, but you're only copying a small section. You'll also need the enzyme DNA polymerase, and this is a special enzyme uh, that was um, discovered from uh, bacteria that are thermophilic, so they live in really hot waters and conditions, and this is great because during the process of PCR, you're actually going to be heating up these samples to unwind and denature DNA. And you don't want your polymerase to be deactivated. So this special polymerase, the TAC polymerase, actually uh, survives these hot conditions very well. You will also need DNA nucleotide bases, also called DNTPs. So these are bases adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. And then uh, for the rest of the reaction, you need the right chemical mix so that this reaction proceeds well and provides the optimi optimum ionic environment and pH uh, for PCR reactions. This graphic shows you on the left side, there is a uh, little tiny little micro test tube and it contains all the ingredients that you're gonna need, the DNA samples, primers, nucleotides, the polymerase, the buffer, and it's all located within that, those tiny PCR tubes. And on the right side shows you the process of PCR. So this photo shows a variety of PCR machines that scientists use. Uh, within our lab at Longmont High School, we have this one right here uh, made from BioRad. It's a large machine that can hold quite a few samples. Uh, this one right here, we do have some in our lab that holds uh, anywhere from 8 to 16 samples, so not very big. And then these other two machines are just examples of other um, products that people use. So basically, PCR is really made up of only three stages. And these three stages are denaturation, annealing, and extension. And these three stages are repeated over and over again, and with each um, repetition of the PCR process, you double the amount of DNA that you're copying. So if you repeat this 25 to 40 times, you get, you'll get thousands or millions of copies of DNA by the end of this process. So let me explain. Denaturation um, is when DNA, which is double-stranded, is unwound and separates into two single strands. And this is done by heating up the sample to 94 degrees Celsius. So remember that 100 degrees Celsius is boiling and 94 is just slightly below that. And then you'll cool the reaction down um, to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius so that while the DNA is unwound, 
uh, the primers, which are short single-stranded pieces of DNA, can bind to the target sequence. So you'll have the forward and reverse primers attaching to the matching uh, DNA segments. And then the last uh, part of this process is called extension. And so the DNA polymerase will attach to the end of these primers and then uh, add on complementary DNA base pairs to the exposed single strand of that template DNA. And it's done at a temperature of 72 degrees Celsius. So through this whole process, basically you're changing the temperature three different times and you allow for these really short stages to occur. And overall, the process of PCR, if you have something like 25 to 40 cycles of this, it could take about two to three hours to complete. So this diagram just shows you in more detail. Uh, here is our double-stranded target DNA. Denaturation is when the DNA strands are unwound and they separate into two, so that's denaturing DNA. Uh, these little short little pieces of DNA that you see right here, those are the primers. So uh, these are going to be the forward and the reverse primer, and they'll attach to the unwound, single-stranded, exposed DNA template. And then the polymerase is going to bind to the end of the primer right here, and then read along the single strand of DNA that was exposed and attach new DNA bases. So wherever you see a T, there will be an A, added on wherever there's a G, a C, a C, a G, and an A and a T. So we're going to use our base pairing rules to attach on the DNA. And then the polymerase will read until it gets to the very end and nothing is going to stop it from reading it to the end. And so you'll have uh, the, the extension of this um, primer right here all the way to the end. Same thing on this strand down here, you'll have this primer and then the an, another TAC polymerase enzyme will attach there um, and match up the complementary base pairs and extend that piece of DNA. So in the process of denaturation and heating up the sample up to 94 degrees Celsius, it's going to break those hydrogen bonds that are between those base pairs um, uh, between the two strands of DNA. In the process of annealing, you'll have the primers, which are single-stranded, will attach to the exposed template. And you can see down here, this is primer one, and it matches, it's complementary to a little segment of the template right there. And primer two is complementary to this segment of DNA right here. So generally, primers are anywhere from 20 to 25 base pairs in length. You don't want them too short because you want these primers to be able to have a very specific match with DNA, and slightly longer uh, pieces of primer are going to be more specific in attaching to the right sections of DNA. Lastly, the third part of this process is extension, where DNA polymerase, which is not shown in this picture, will attach to this three prime end of the primer and extend all the bases out and add them one by one right there. And you'll want another TAC polymerase or DNA polymerase to attach to this three prime end and it attaches complementary base pairs of DNA that way. So all of this happens pretty quickly because the enzymes will read this DNA sequence and attach the matching base pairs to it pretty quickly. So PCR involves denaturation, annealing, and extension, and then you repeat that 25 to 40 times. So the first time uh, through the cycle, you will get from one piece of DNA to two copies of it. And through the second cycle, you will end up making copies of each of those. So you go from two strands of DNA or two uh, molecules of DNA to four. And then the third cycle will double that to eight. So you can see that if it's repeated 25 to 40 times, you'll end up getting lots and lots of copies of DNA through that many cycles. This is just another graphic to show you uh, the process of PCR in another way, where step one is denaturing. You'll see two strands of DNA. Step two, annealing at a slightly lower temperature, and you have your two different primers attaching. 
Stage uh, three is extension, and here is the TAC polymerase that you see here. It's that DNA uh, polymerase that comes from a thermophilic bacterium. And these little things represent the bases that are going to be complementary to the exposed uh, bases shown on the template DNA. And then you'll see these new strands being made. So there are many different types of PCR. Here's a list of some different types of PCR. So conventional PCR, there's real-time or quantitative PCR, also called qPCR. Um, I want to make us give a special shout out to this RT-PCR or reverse transcription PCR. We're going to learn a little bit about that some more. Um, there's isothermal PCR and um, a variety of them. This graphic shows a comparison of conventional versus real-time PCR. Here is multiplex and nested and reverse transcriptase PCR. I want to highlight reverse transcriptase or RT-PCR right here because as you can see in this uh, chart that the target sequence for the other types of PCR is DNA and that's to be expected, but RT-PCR actually uses RNA as the template or target sequence. It allows you to be able to detect quantities of RNA in things uh, that are pathogens such as viruses. And so this adds an extra step to your PCR process before you run your regular PCR, and that's you use uh, this RT or reverse transcriptase, which is another enzyme uh, that allows you to go backwards in the genetic code. So normally the central dogma is DNA gets made into RNA through transcription and then RNA into proteins through translation. But with reverse transcriptase, it's a special enzyme that allows you to go backwards to go from RNA and make a DNA copy. And so this is really a powerful tool because it allows you to be able to detect viruses and uh, other pathogens. So our main lesson for this week is to look at real-world applications of PCR. Within medicine, PCR is used to detect, identify, sequence, or clone genes that are under investigation. Um, PCR is used in drug produ production because you want to clone genes and construct recombinant expression vectors. So if you're going to ramp up production of a particular type of protein, you want to make copies of some of that DNA or the genes uh, involved in producing those proteins, and you would use PCR. Uh, qPCR is a process used to diagnose diseases, and RT-PCR, as we've talked about before, uh, can diagnose infectious diseases, cancer, and genetic abnormalities. So to just recap our lesson for today, PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, and it involves about 25 to 40 cycles, and each cycle has three stages, denaturation, annealing, and extending. So that you get lots of copies, or you amplify your DNA, or as we just learned from RT-PCR, you could be making lots of copies of RNA into DNA.